America was founded on racism. And another quote, parents need to stay out of their kids' education and shouldn't have a say in what they learn. Are the kinds of things maybe you'd expect to read on the pages of Pravda back during the battle days of the Cold War when the communists were running Russia. Well, I have some news for you. Pravda is now a part of the U.S. military's training manuals, and the communists are running Washington. Hey everybody, I'm Steve Green with Bill Whittle and Scott Ott, and this is Right Angle, brought to you by the members of BillWhittle.com. Uh, gentlemen, uh, lives a tip t- uh, TikTok uh, run by, uh, uh, oh, I just forgot her name, uh, uh, Chaya Rachik, I believe. Thank you. Just remember that. Had a bit of a scoop today, and she's got more to come. This, this came up on Tuesday morning. Um, uh, she has, uh, she was given some training documents that are stamped with the, uh, U.S. Command and General Staff College at Fort Leavenworth that has, uh, helpful training instructions like these. Whites are responsible for the current racial bias and culture of today and tomorrow, and the education system at the elementary, middle, and high school levels do not provide the context nor the development of the language necessary to have appropriate discourse on systemic racism. And, of course, these are the things being taught to the people who will be training our military. Uh, Scott, <clears throat> mandatory training for military members teaches that America was founded on racism. This is, is this is according to Libs at TikTok. And parents are too ignorant and dumb to teach their children about it. They think parents need to stay out of their kids' education and shouldn't have a say in what they learn. Um, is that any way to run either a K-12 through system or a military? I was going to say, this is not some secret document. This is just the official position of the teachers union, isn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I did. You know, years ago, I worked for a school system, and uh, and I continually got the sense that uh, the people in the administration thought uh, it would be a much better school district if it weren't for all the parents. Um, you know, now publicly, they would say, hey, we, we love to engage with our stakeholders, which is what parents are called then. I don't know, some sort of Dracula meme going around. Uh, but they were, <laughs> they would say that. But in reality, they were like all of our known problems stemmed from the fact that parents are involved in the education of their children. Um, I'm a little skeptical about using any source that comes through, uh, through libs of TikTok. Um, I did, however, uh, have the Chaya Rachik at Starbucks the other day uh, in a extra large, I think it was a venti, uh, delicious. Uh, but, you know, uh, it's funny. I just saw a video two days ago, and it was um, Morgan Freeman, I believe, being interviewed either on 60 Minutes or one of those kind of news shows. And, um, and they were asking him about Black History Month. And without quoting him, because I only watched it once, um, he basically said, I don't want your Black History Month. Um, And uh, I think it was Mike Wallace at the time uh, was asking him, well, why not? And um, he said, Black history is American history. And he said, you want to relegate me to one month? You know, just put me off to the side there and and make it seem like you're paying tribute to me by by allowing me to have a month of the year where you're going to talk about black history. It's just part of American history. And it doesn't do us any good to subdivide. And it's the same thing with these accusations of, you know, racism, the foundation of the country and stuff like that. No, actually, the the country was founded on much higher aspirations. But people have always been the foundation of civilization and people are flawed. And some of us are racists and some of us are uh, more, uh, you know, have greater problems than others. Some of us are more influential than others. And, and any time you start to brand eras of history as if it was all one big thing, um, I think you make a huge mistake. You know, it, it wasn't all one big thing. There were there were a variety of kinds of people around at all times during history. There are waves of public opinion that are more prevalent at one time than another. We're going to look back at today. These same people who are branding, you know, our ancestors as the racists who started this country uh, will be looked back upon by others as just animals that, you know, that should have been put out of their misery someday in the future because of their cruelty and unfairness and injustice and and racism. Um, so anyway, if, if this turns out to be something that's actually being taught through the Pentagon, um, I hope that Congress exercises some oversight in that regard. Um, but it doesn't. Well, let me, me let me give you a quick follow up and, and kind of a, a redirect. Then uh, we see the army is shrinking by 24,000 people this year because they can't meet the recruiting goals. So they're 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 basically shuffling the deck and, and throwing out a bunch of cards. 
the Marines can't meet their recruiting goals. That's been going on for a few years and has never happened in the history of the Marine Corps. Uh, the Navy can't get enough sailors to man its ships, and the, the Air Force has recruiting problems as well. Every one of the four services, well, five now, I guess, with Space Force, uh, is failing to meet their recruiting goals. And who would choose to defend a country, Scott, where the soldiers are being taught is irredeemably racist? Yeah. Yeah. And who who wants to fight for that? You're right. I mean, there was right or wrong. I mean, there was never a time in our history, I think, where everybody went, America is always right and we always have the best <laughs> motives and we have no flaws, you know, and that's just nonsense. Um, and, uh, you know, but if you tell people from birth that America is the worst place on earth and uh, bears a greater responsibility for the ills that befall others on the planet, then and then you turn around and say, hey, by the way, how would you like to fight and possibly die for that horrible place? Um, who could blame young men from saying, you know what, I think there are better ways that I can spend my life than being a, a tool of this horrifying regime? Yeah, uh, Scott, or actually, let me shift over to, to Bill now. When I was writing this up for uh, the story up for PJ Media on Tuesday morning, I was reminded of a, uh, a video, and I actually managed to come across several, but I'll just I'll quote the one for me. This is from a couple of years ago. Uh, an, an RB sergeant named Cindy Bronson uploaded this video to, to TikTok a while back. Uh, and it was a message for her fellow Americans in case martial law was ever declared. She said, understand that if active duty military actually get deployed within the United States, that weapon, she was gesturing to her own M16, I believe it was, uh, that weapon is not just going to be pointed at other people, other countries, it is pointed at you. And Bill, it struck me that if, uh, if this country is horrible and racist and always will be, that this is the kind of person who will gladly serve in the United States military. Well, there's no question about that. And we've seen a number of these uh, power tripping. Uh, in, in most of the cases, I think they've been women um, who basically said, you know, we're going to, if, if things go south, we've got the guns and you're going to do what we tell you. And if you don't do what we tell you, then bad things are going to happen to you. I th Look, the, the military was and remains the most intact and um, and pure form of the uh, res repository of the nation's values. And, and, it, and that makes sense. It's not got anything to do with them being something magic about the military, but if you're gonna sign on the dotted line and agree to go over and have your one life shot out from underneath you because you love your country, that's gonna tend to be made up of people who love their country. But to, to pretend that this thing is just accidental or just some kind of cultural drift is insane. I mean, you have to look at this from a purely dollar and cents point of view. We've been spending four, five, six hundred billion dollars a year on our defense budget since the end of World War II, more or less on and off. If you're China, all the talk about how China's got this and China's got that, China cannot possibly touch this, this country militarily, and neither can Russia, and can, the rest of the world combined cannot put a dent in us militarily. So if you're looking at this as an enemy of the United States, you have to ask yourself, we cannot afford to spend a trillion dollars a year to catch up with the United States in 20 years, and we don't have to. We don't have to sink the battle sh the, the aircraft carriers. We don't have to destroy the carrier battle groups. We don't have to shoot the bombers out of the airplanes. All we have to do is make sure that the people manning those weapon systems no longer believe for the cause that they fight in. And now we don't have any 11 carrier battle groups and we don't have any bomber wings and we don't have any nuclear submarines. We don't have any of these things because we can't staff them. It's a cost effective, extremely cost effective way to destroy the country. You don't have to break the sword. All you have to do is make the arm incapable of wielding the weapon and, and, and you've accomplished your, your mission. Now, with all of that said, nobody believes that this, that, that this thing is, is accidental. The question is, why is it coming through official channels? I'm, I'm going to, Scott has got the, the kind of skepticism that's built into somebody with, with, first of all, with moral integrity, and secondly, who's been trained as a journalist. But I, I, I have no doubt whatsoever that this is intentional, that it's coming down through the government by people who are not friendly to our interests. I'd like to tell you that if you wore the uniform, it meant that you were incorruptible and would, would, you know, would never think about putting your job or your career or money ahead of the lives of your men. But we've seen from procurement uh, uh, exercises like with the Bradley, for example, the Bradley fighting vehicle, the original version of that, when they tested it, they found it was a little prone to explode, which is generally not good for your career if you're in charge of the Bradley terminal uh, program. So what we found was that generals were putting um, water in fuel tanks when they were doing the tests on the Bradley against rocket propelled grenades 
because it was their program and the brass put their advancement of their career ahead of the lives of their men. And those were American generals in uniform. And these people need to be tried for treason and that's all there is to it. Now, with all of that said, with all of that said, the military is still superbly uh, lethal and superbly patriotic. There is no question that inroads are being made, but the fact that they're not meeting their recruitment goals is not only an indication that this thing isn't working, not meeting the recruitment goals is the goal. You understand that? Let's take the, the classic example, right? That, that army commercial that came out several years ago, the cartoon story about the woman with two moms who grew up protesting against injustice and she's a Patriot missile battery officer. Okay, that, that, the, the purpose of that recruitment goal is for the army to not make its recruitment <laughs> goals. You, yes. you, you understand what I'm saying here? That's why that ad was made. That ad was made to make sure that they do not make their recruitment goals because there's not a single person raised by lesbians in San Francisco who's going to join the army because of that ad. But there are tens of thousands of young men who want to go out there and kick ass who will not join the army because of that ad. This is not an accident and it's not, and, and anybody who thinks it is, is just blindingly naive. Now, as far as the good news goes, we could solve the recruitment issue in a very short period of time. And if Donald Trump wins the election in 2024, this is going to happen rather quickly. Cashier all of the people in the Pentagon, destroy the Pentagon. Just the Pentagon is the source of the entire problem. It's a, it's a priesthood and it's a fortress and it's designed to keep out fresh ideas and I just get rid of it. But if, if I wanted to solve the issue of the Marine recruitment problem, Scott, uh, Steve, right now, I'd make an ad and the ad would have one tagline, we do bad things to bad people. And that's what I would do. I'd just show an ad of young men getting out of airplanes and helicopters and kicking doors in and, and just gunning down bad guys and saving civilians and walking little girls and little kids out of a room where they were hostages and you would have this problem solved in no time because young men still want to do the right thing in this country and you can't beat the biology out of people. You can try the way you try and beat the biology out of movies and that's not succeeded either. The military will be okay. It's going to take more damage before it gets better, but it will get better. And if it turns, I would rather have six battle groups made up of staffed by highly motivated, patriotic, capable people than 11 that are made up of questionable, numbers of people in key positions and that means that the whole thing is is tainted you can't you can't count on it we're going to be okay but this kind of nonsense is going to stop yeah, soon i certainly I hope feel. so because the, the the path run bill is one that i, I started reading about this has got to be more than 30 years ago now when I first deeply got into military history. And, and two of the authors I enjoyed the most were uh, Jim Dunnigan and Austin Bay, who did a, a number of books together. Um, and one of the things I learned mm -hmm. is, number one, offensive war hardly ever pays off. It's, you know, hey, we're going to go take their stuff. And then either you fail right. to take it or it gets destroyed or what. It's it just it's a bad idea. Um, and the other is mm -hmm. most militaries, particularly in the third world, they're not there to invade their neighbors or to protect themselves from being invaded by their neighbors. They're there to protect yeah. the president for life, uh, his hide, and his financial interests. That's that's the army's job. If there's a, a national uprising, from his own people, in, in, including the former superpower, yes. that's exactly what it's there to do: protect the, protect the leader's hide and his financial exactly. interests. Exactly, and yes. that's that's ba that's what your basic third world military is for. It's there for to suppress domestic dissent. And you never think about that with the U.S. military. It, is, it has been a, a beacon for, for centuries now. But I am seeing now the very first signs, and it's been going on for a couple of years now, the very first signs of the sort of third worldization of the United States military. And if that doesn't send a chill down your spine, well, I think maybe you need to rewatch the, uh, the first 10 minutes of this segment. And that is your right angle on that, brought to you by the members of BillWhittle.com. Thank you so much for watching. and. We'll see you next time.